So let's move on to ICU. And this is just a reinstall because of LLV. I'm not sure if it is absolutely necessary, but now we've got LLVM with all the um, required dependencies. It should be, well, hopefully, it'll be a better build. Uh, so I don't need to save it, it already exists. I see you. So if CLang++ is available using the mistaken belief that G++ might not support C++11, even though it could be was tested for that. If using G++, there will be an unnecessary warning in the configure. Building with G++ also takes, also takes longer than the estimated SPU. So I'm not sure which will be chosen. I'll just, as before, take the um, commands that are in the book. We know they've been tested. And run that.
Okay, so that has built. Let's now run the checks. Look at, let's see how long these are expected to take. Okay, perhaps about twice as long as what that took, which was only a few minutes anyway. So make check. Okay, so that's finished, all okay, it says there. So, pass, config, self-check, okay. That looks like that's successful. So, let's install the package again. And that's done. So, I'm not going to mark that one off as complete in Chapter 9. and close that tab down. So now what I want to do is get into a situation where the only two packages I've got to install for Falcon are Qt Web Engine and Qt because what I want to do is to install them into a fresh directory. Uh, I'm going to try and do that with Falcon up and running even though it's using those libraries. Um, just so I can see what the difference is because 
I'm assuming as I didn't have all the dependencies installed that both of those packages Qt Web Engine and Qt have built some internal packages so I'm assuming that the newly built Qt packages Qt Web Engine and Qt will be slightly smaller um, so that's why I want to do that um, and also as you can see um, Falcon I'll have to reinstall anyway because it needs KDE frameworks but these two should be able to be installed um, again completely I think he says I'm um, not sure about these two actually um, but I'll see about that in a moment let's deal with QT still um, yeah there's still some here that need to be installed so I'm going to see how we go I'm going to try and try and install as many of these as I can without getting too deep um, probably will have to get down some um, some levels in the dependency list uh, but I'll try and keep it quite reasonable because what I want to do is try and make this the last time I install these if I can things are quite big packages so yeah let's see how we go and some of these have been installed like this Node.js that must have been installed because it's a requirement even though it's not um, the link hasn't changed color but that's probably because it was installed while we're still using the Lynx text browser so um, looks like I've got cups highlighted here um, yeah it hasn't been downloaded so let's go and deal with that and its dependencies so we can get some of these dealt with oh yes this needed that LVM with CLang so that's probably why I'll revert it back to um, getting on with building LLVM so we've got GNU TLS installed it's a requirement that's already there I'm sure we've already installed it so let's now move on to color D and this has got some dependencies so it needs dbus I'm sure we've installed dbus again let's see if it's in our list because some of these are still here we've got dbus glib oh there's dbus there so that's under chapter 12 yes I've crossed that off so that has been installed so I'll get rid of that tab go back to color D glib looks like that's been installed as well so let's just have a look at that so that's chapter 9 Oh yes, I've got that to reinstall after sysprof and I think sysprof had a lot of dependencies yes, GTK so I'm going to assume for the time being that glib is installed for as far as color D is concerned so let's move on to little CMS. We've got these two installed, so that's fine. Let's download this package. Oh, it's SourceForge again. And I'll just check these two. I'm pretty sure these are um, installed so let's libjpg turbo which is under chapter 10 and libtiff yep that's also installed so save this file shut that tab down oh it's still going
So that's quite a big package. Was it slow? No, it looks like it's slow. It's only 7 meg and it's still downloading, unfortunately. Okay, now it's finished. Obviously, SourceForge chose a very slow server for that download. Okay, so there's no um, special options here. I'll just copy and paste this. Check it with make check. And that's done, so now we'll install it. And that's complete. So look for that in chapter 10. Little CMS. Now there's two versions there. We've just installed 2.12, so make sure we tick off the right one. And get rid of that tab. Pull kit. I'm going to check all these because um, it could have been several days ago when we did this. So this is chapter 4, security. Right, that hasn't been done yet. Um, so it needs glib. I'm, I'm fairly satisfied that that doesn't need to be reinstalled apart from that one. Oh, sorry, it is a good dependency. It just needs to be reinstalled for that one link. We've got this JS, which I think is still pending to be built. So that needs all of these. I think we've done Rust-C as well. Yeah, I'm pretty sure we did that. Chapter 13. Rust-C, yeah. So it looks like... Um, this JS could be installed. We've just done ICU, autoconf, I'm pretty sure we've done. 2.13, that's in chapter 13. Yeah, that's complete. So what I'm going to do is move JS after here, because Polkit needs it. And I'm sure it looks like GJS probably needed it as well. Yeah, it did. So, install this one next. So, this looks like it's part of the Firefox source. I'm not sure if I've already downloaded this, actually. Let's check. 78.13.0 ESR. Yeah, so it's already extracted. So, uh, sorry, already downloaded. Just going to check. Yeah, I've got some directories here. Let me just tidy these directories up that I've left. So PY3, legacy, font, canter of font, so I can get rid of that one. So it's just those two, that's all right. Okay, so I'll extract this Firefox. So 
locked. Unlike most other packages in BLFS, the instructions below require you to untar Firefox and change into the Firefox folder. Okay, we should be alright with this because we're not root. There's no directory with the sticky bit set. Um, because we're in a subdirectory called BLFS, which is off. The sources has got the sticky bit set, as I seem to remember. But BLFS hasn't, so we should be alright with that. If you're compiling it in true, it must do two things. We're not doing that, so we can go straight down here. When the package is extracted, I think it's going to take a while, isn't it? Oh, maybe not too much. Maybe it's because it's just part of the Firefox package, which is the Java, JavaScript engine. Okay, so we'll change into Firefox. Create this OBJ directory and change into it. Then we can run this configure command. Going to check to see if there's any other options we might want to set. And no, there isn't. So we'll just run that. And now we'll build JS.
Okay, so that has built. Yep, and we can run some test suites now. So the first one is this command here. It recommends the output the redirect the output to a log. So let's call something like test dot log and wait for that to finish. Um, while that's running, I can tail that in this window.
Okay, so that's finished. Um, it says there's an error there. If I get the browser back. Um, it does say either 10 or 14 tests related to locale and time zone fail because of an issue with recent versions of ICU. So let's have a look at this tests log and I'll look for the word error uh, maybe that's not gonna let's look for capital E R O R no it looks like that's not gonna help either um, let's look for let's go back to the top and look for file no I'm not sure what to look for. There's no indication. Um, let's go to the bottom. So there's some known fails at the bottom there. So let me look, go to the top and try looking for test hyphen fail. No. Um, Fail in capitals, known fail. So some known failures. Um, let's look for error in capitals. No, I'm not quite sure what to look for then. Let's try failure. Uh, search for dash fail again. Let's look for locale then. And then look for fail. Okay, um, really don't know what to look for, uh, so the trouble is I can't really detect how bad the failures are, how many, you know, if there's a lot. Test pass known failures, let's have a good search through here so there's nothing at the bottom I'll go to the top again and look for time zone So all the mentions of time zone have got a pass or known failure against them. I think I'm going round, am I? Yeah, I'm going round in circles. So, um, I'm not quite sure what to do there. I'd, I'd say it's probably okay. Um, it just says error one at the end. So, yeah, I don't really know what to make of that. Um, let's see what this comes back with. Um, see how long this takes and see if this comes up with any errors. I'll put this out to a log as well and I'll shrink
shrink that and stop that one and trace that one as well.
Okay, so that's finished testing. Um, looks like there's some errors again. I did notice when I was watching the log go past that um, some of them seem to take some time, so I wondered if that's why the timeout's there and they could be the ones that are failing. Um, it does say that one test may fail, so again, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to find this or not. But let's take a look. Um, I'll go to the bottom first of all. It says that three have failed. Okay, there are timeouts. Okay, it looks like there's a summary. I didn't see that in the other one. Um, it doesn't say what the failure may be. Um, but it is only a small number, three out of 40,000, over 40,000 tests. So I think that's uh, quite reasonable. Uh, I'm just going to look at the other one again to see if that had a summary in a similar way. No, it didn't, unfortunately. Uh, no. So I'm happy to install this. Come the root and install it with these commands here. Um, initial the installation process causes any running program which links to JS78. Okay, so it's an upgrade, so that's not a problem here. And we're already building it once anyway. So that is all complete. So it's JS in chapter 9. So that's complete. So I'll close that down now. And move on to Polkit. And we've got these two, so that's fine. We can download this. And a patch. Okay. Um, since elog and D is a good idea to build Polkit with PAM support, so that's okay, we're going to do that. Um, okay, some more dependencies here. Dbus mock for tests, let's look at that. So the Python module requires Dbus Python at runtime. Uh, looks like we might already have that. So I'll check my list of modules. Yep, Dbus Python, we have indeed installed that. So it's just this one that needs downloading. Python Dbus mock. So as usual with these modules are relatively straightforward to build and install. So that's done. So I'll mark that one off on the Python modules. So it's called Python Dbus mock, isn't it? I think. Yep. Python Dbus mock. Okay. Back to Polkit and the only other thing are runtime dependencies, so these will get installed as and when we do these things. I will be installed in KDE, GNOME 3 and LXDE, so we don't need to do them now. Installation of Polkit needs 
a daemon. Uh, so we need a user and a group. So let's become root and run these commands. Come back to the unprivileged user, run the patch, and then auto reconfigure. Oh, let's uh, extract Polka first of all, might help. So now we can run the configure command. There's some extra options. So let's check these. Disabled libsystemd, lib that's because we're not using systemd, but we're li using elogind. No static. With all FW shadow, this switch enables package to use shadow rather than the Linux PAM authentication, authentication framework. Use it if you've not installed PAM. We have, so we don't use that. And then if GTK is installed and you wish to rebuild and install API, which we don't want to do, so we'll just accept that configure as it is. And let's just quickly check the parameters that is detected. So it all looks good. So let's now build it. And run the test. We should have the debus daemon running because we've added it in to the X in RC, and I think there's a init script for it as well. So so far we've had passes. Just wait for the end of the tests. And that's it, that's finished or passed. So we can install. And got some configuration to do as the root user. Just add this in. So that's it. So we can mark that one off again. We're back to chapter four, security chapter. Pull kit. That's marked off now. Close that tab down. And back to color D. We've got SQLite, we've got object introspection. So libgu dev recommended. Let's have a look at that one. Object introspection, GTK doc, we've got a new mock dev for testing. So let's look at that one. The GU dev, right, so that's a circular dependency, is it? Okay, let's see if it says anything about the testing here. It doesn't. So libgudev is a requirement for umockdev, so we can't install it and do the test until we've installed libgudev. So we're going to have to install it twice to enable us to test. Um, let's see what else umockdev needs. So it needs lib, lib, 
PCAP. And this requires blues. Bluetooth stack. So the Apple has got Bluetooth um, built in. So we'll be building this. So I may as well do it now. Things it's a requirement. Dbus we've got, Glib we've got, LibiCal we need. Simmake, object, yeah we've got all this. Yep, I think we've got all that so we can download this and build it after I've cleaned up Polkit. So package my file occasionally when building multiple processors. So using multiple processors as a quick look at that, is that something we've already seen? Yes it is. So that's not a problem. I didn't know whether it's going to tell us anything additional that we haven't already read. So I'm going to create a build directory, copy the CMake command and then examine the command explanation, see if there's anything extra special here that we can change. Okay, so release, that's fair enough. Shared only, that's okay. Object introspection we've got. GDF API, that's for the bindings of Valor, that's true. And use built-in TZ data, this switch is used in order to build using your own time zone data. I'm not really sure I presume we'd have to supply some extra data for that so I'm going to ignore that and just put in the two dots to complete the CMake command and run it ok Okay, the difference is between system and built-in time zone data. So I'm going to rerun that and actually add that in because normally with these instructions the system is the best. So let's see how that goes. So doesn't mention it there now like it did before. Following features have been enabled. There it is there. I'll oh, choose our own time zone rather than system. That's kind of different to what it says here. Oh, I see the following features have been disabled as kind of, it means that it's disabled using our own time zone rather than the system time zone data. Right, okay. So I don't really want that there then, in that case, because I'd rather the system was used, which is what the default was, which kind of makes sense, is what they tend to recommend. So that hasn't come back there now, so maybe I've got to actually specify no there to switch it back. Yes, that's right. Okay, so it's how it was. I'm going to run the make now and build it. Okay, that's complete. Let's run some tests. And 
that's all passed. Install the package and that's complete. So this is chapter 9, lib iCal is complete. So the next one with blues is, there isn't any more, okay, so we can download this now. Save the package, uh, sorry, patch. Extract the package. And we need some kernel configuration here, okay. Um, so it says here that um, we are building it for both of these reasons actually as a build dependency and for Bluetooth devices. If there wasn't any Bluetooth, we we're just building it as a build dependency, then you wouldn't need to make the changes in the kernel. So, what I'm going to do is um, become the root. change the sources Linux source make menu config as we've done previously and modify the kernel so yeah so this display you can see the characters haven't come up correctly so the character set is not being used correctly but it doesn't affect the functioning of the uh, menu menuing system it just um, just looks a bit strange so general setup configure standard kernel features expert users so that's down the bottom is it no yep there it is so we need to select that and then we need to enable Time FD system call. So we need to look for that. Is it not in here? So I'm going to look for press forward slash and look for timer FD. So it should be under that. All oh, right, okay, it's here. So I'm not sure if these should be set or unset, the rest of these. So I'm going to leave them as they are. So we have got those set. Um, let's look at these, the help. I don't think we need that. Sure, say yes. There's a default option here. Say yes. Okay, looks like it's probably best to leave the rest of these. Yeah, enabled. Okay, so I'll quit that. So next one's under networking support. We want to have Bluetooth subsystem support. So I'm going to build that in as a module because I don't know how often I'll be using it. And then we want RFCOM protocol support. Again, I'll put that in as a module. RFCOM TTY. BNet protocol support, multicast and protocol, and HIDP protocol support, Bluetooth device drivers, select the appropriate one. So um, I need to find out what this should be. So probably the best thing to do is to get another window up. And 
and run LSPCI, which we haven't got unfortunately. Done LS USB. Okay. Um, another way I can do this is to search the internet. So Apple iMac mid twenty fourteen Linux blue tooth driver. Let's see if that finds anything for us. Let's see if this is any good. So Bluetooth. Just work out the box. It doesn't actually help us with the hardware. Let's try changing this around. Yeah, let's try kernel. Specs. Right, I must have missed it. Bluetooth four. So it doesn't give us any more information there. Maybe the thing to do is to actually install PCI utilities. So control F, PCI utils. Let's open that up. So we've got all of these, that's not a problem. I'll just click on that so that the Link changes color. Save this link. Okay, we've already downloaded it. Um, okay, is it not available to the MSPCI? All oh, right, okay. It's because um, we check that that's been marked off. Then, in that case. PCI, yeah, it is there. Okay, it's probably because the super user, uh, the unprivileged user, is not allowed access to the executable. So I'm looking for Bluetooth. Let's see if I can grab this. All right, okay. It may well be a USB device in that case. That's a possibility. So we've got host bridge, VJ controller, audio, USB controller, communication controller. It could be that one. Let's see what a search on the internet says for that.
So I'll probably run this with that minus V and K as well. So there it is there at the top of the screen. No, sorry, it's not that one. It's that one there at the top of the screen. So there's currently no kernel driver loaded. That kind of agrees what we've got here because the Bluetooth um, functionality was disabled. So we need to, looks like MEIME -E -E is the one, if that's indeed what a hecky controller is. Let's uh, find out what is a hecky. Host embedded controller interface. Active management technology. All right, so maybe this isn't. But it does look like it's something maybe that should be added in. Yeah, there's no mention of Bluetooth there. So I'll come back to that to add that in. It's obviously something that would be useful to have. Uh, next we've got a PCI bridge, another PCI bridge, PCI bridge, PCI bridge, ISA bridge, SATA controller, SM bus, network controller. So that's the wireless, so that might be useful in time. Then we've got an Ethernet controller, SD controller, PCI bridge, another PCI bridge. Another one, another one, another one, another one. Thunderbolt, and that's it. So it could be that the Bluetooth is um, a USB device. So then I need LS USB, Oops. which we haven't got. So I need to install. Um, USB utils is it? Yeah. So I'll get rid of this PCI utils because that's obviously installed. And I need to install libUSB. And start installing this. So let me make this window a bit bigger. I'll do the installation here. Uh, large. I'll just put that here. So save this link. Uh, Lib USB. So there's no configuration options, so just build it. It does say it doesn't support parallel build, but it seems to have work, worked and there wasn't any mention of minus J1 in the instructions, so um, kind of a bit weird. Hopefully it will work. There's no test suite. Let's install the library. No documentation. The configuration Let's just do a grep for USB support in sources linux.config. I forgot to put the forward slash in again. And you can see that's set. And then we just need to look for um, config USB equals yes and you can see there it's it's set config USB is actually built in. Um, it says selecting USB hardware drivers may need on the same page so that's something we need to come back to. Um, let's have a look at this. Okay that that's something we may need to do if it doesn't work, but uh, libusb is installed. Oops. 
So I'll mark that one off, chapter 9, lib, USB. And now USB utils. So configuration, there's nothing mentioned about options for configure, so we'll just use the configure they've got and build it. So there's no test, so we'll just do make install. And now become the root to fetch a data file. And then it says to get, it's currently updated, to get the current version of the file using wget periodically run again as the root user. And um, this can be added to fcron, so I can't remember if we installed cron or not. No, we haven't done that yet, so it's something still to do. Um, so I'll just put that after make CA and I'm going to go back and look at PCI utils because I thought there was a cron job, yeah there is to keep that updated so I'll put that there as well um, but yeah apart from that USB utils is installed now So does USB utils work as he, you, no it doesn't, so sudo, no sorry it's lsusb isn't it, lsusb, yeah that works. So yeah there's our Bluetooth controller, so um, it is a USB device we need to add in, uh, it looks like it might also be worth adding in any functionality with the mouse and keyboard if we see that. Um, and also the cameras there as well, although I don't think it works on this machine, I think it just comes up with a black when I've tried it. Um, okay, that's the keyboard. Yep, so let's go back to the blues configuration. Um, I'll just keep this down here for the moment in case we need to go back to it. Um, so USB driver, yes, this is what we need then, isn't it? So let's press M. Um, enable USB auto suspend for Bluetooth. Let's have a look at that. You probably want that. Let's add that in and then we need to know what protocol we're using. Let's just take a look at the output here again. It just says, or it says it's a Broadcom, Broadcom USB 2 hub is part of the BCM2046 Bluetooth. So it is Broadcom BCM2046. So I'll get rid of the real tech. There's no point in that being there. Um, it disappear. It's got BCM203 there. What's this? BCM2046. So I'm not sure. Let's read the help on that. Plutonium. Okay. Let's see what it helps us for this. So it doesn't specifically say what kind of controller and it could be that this is the one we need, it will drive it or it could be that this will work. So we may have to play around with this. Um, it might be worth just adding this in. 
as a module it might then auto load if it is needed so that's the hardware done possibly it's something that has to be tested um, so now we need to go back to RF switch support RF switch support oh, this is still under networking support okay I can't oh there it is there so that's built in anyway um, no help for this option I suppose that's needs to be set if we've set it on the menu previously so I'll switch sus subsystem support and switch input support All right, I don't think there's an RF switch I'm not sure if it means a software switch or not um, maybe I'll make that a module as well Okay, now we need to go to cryptographic API and we need to select user space cryptographic algorithm information so that's already set user space interface for hash algorithms I think the reuser space options are near the bottom yep there they are so that's already set symmetric key cipher algorithms that's that one MD5 digest algorithm so I guess it's going to be somewhere up here there it is that's already selected anyway and SHA-1 digest algorithm so I'll add that in as well then security options we need to add in Diffie Hellman operations on retained keys so that's selected as well now I suspect because of the cryptographic changes have made and possibly the security ones this is going to be a full rebuild so let me now get rid of this window I think we're done with it. let me just push it right out of the way I'll build this now I think it will go through most of the kernel and rebuild most of the modules there So it looks like it is doing quite a bit, so I'm just going to wait for that to build now.
Right, so that's built, so what we've got to do now is to install it. So, mount the boot. Oh, right, okay, the boot is part of the root file system. So, let's copy from Arch. Is it 664? Is an image to boot VM Linux dash two CP system dot map boot system dot map dash two and CP dot config to boot config dash two. So what I'm going to do now is to reboot to get that kernel active. It's um, normally I tend to not rebuild the kernel every time. There's some requirements unless I actually need the functionality there and then. But because we're building a system up gradually, libraries need to be reinitialized or they've been overwritten and so on. Um, it's quite a good idea to reboot every now and then. So taking the opportunity when you've built a kernel to install it and reboot to load that kernel um, is quite a good idea I think. So I'll quit um, Falcon and then I'm going to just do control C on this, stop tailing that, do control D here. So we've got to return to blues next time when we reboot the machine. I'll just do control D here to shut down all of the windowing system. Control D to log out and then Control Delete to reboot. And you'll notice it says the kernel was built uh, halfway up the screen, number 5. So when it now reboots, it should be version number 6. So just waiting for the chime. There it goes. So any moment now, I should get the grub menu, which is there. Press Enter and it's booting. Okay, and you can see it says there kernel built number six, so we've definitely got the kernel that's just been built. So I'll log in again and start up the windowing system. And I might as well just start forking from here, I think. Um, No, I don't know what's happening with that script actually. So, start Falcon, put it in the background. There it's loaded. Um, actually, I'll, maybe I should try the just Falcon by itself to see if. Anything we've done has changed. No, it hasn't. I don't think that's going to change until one or both of the QT packages have been re reinstalled. So that has loaded. I'm going to quit this. And again, it's not closing down. So I'll just kill that window to remove it. So back here. Back to sources. BLFS. Blues. So if I do um, LSUSB, there's no change there. Um, LS PCI. Oh, one thing I didn't do was that um, the other bit of hardware. Just do minus K to see the the um, yeah the kernel drivers that are used. Um, it was. this one here so I'm going to do that now before I forget but I'm, I'm not going to um, rebuild or anything well I could do I suppose just leave it running but um, I'm certainly not going to reboot into it because it's not necessary at the moment <clears throat> uh, 
Um, so, which one was it? Was it this one here? Yeah, so I need to look for a kernel driver with that name there. So I'll become root again. So forward slash mei underscored me. There it is. There it's set to no, as we'd expect because it's not activated. There it is. There. Let's just see what it says. MEI support for ME enabled chipsets. So um, I guess our chipset is one of those there. So I'll enable that with a module. Our management engine. That's what it stands for. I did wonder. And I presume that will be sufficient. I'll build this. Okay, so that's built. Um, like I say, well, we are could install it, I suppose. Why not? Um, and then it's there for next time when we reboot. So, um, I'll see if these... I don't think these CP commands will exist. I'm pretty sure Linux from scratch clears the um, buffer. Yeah, it does. So I'm going to type them in again. So, cp arch x86 underscore 64 boot vm linux dash two and the system dot map file dash two and the config okay so it's ready to reboot for next time um actually I'm thinking maybe I should reboot now because I might forget about it uh, yeah, let's do that. So, quit that. Quit this. And quit that. And control or delete. Okay, there's a chime. Got the menu, press enter, and it's booting. So it should be appearing soon. There it is now. So, log in. Um, now, one thing I need to do here is just to edit the X in it uh, X11 X in it to RC um, I thought I added in some yeah X settings there they don't seem to be working The DPMS is disabled, so that one's worked. So it's probably this X set, no blank, that should maybe be off. Uh, X set, S, off. Yep, 
Yeah, I think that should be off, not no blank. Okay, and I guess I could try and run start Vulcan. Um, see if that works. Save me having to load it up every time. So I'll quit this. Start X and yes, it is loading. That's good. And if I do um, X set Q, I can see that the screensaver timeout is zero. And DPMS is disabled. So hopefully the screen won't blank now. Um, it will automatically set up to um, stay on. So that when I'm recording anything more than I think it's, is it 10 minutes, yeah, 600, um, it won't go blank. Okay, so uh, there's no other way, unfortunately, of testing the Bluetooth at the moment. Um, because it's not LSPCI, I can't. Or on the PCI, I can't view it there. Um, should be able to run that to see this other device that we just activated. Um, oh no, it hasn't it hasn't come up funny enough. Um, let's have a look at LS mod. Okay, let's try mod probe MEIME. Oh no, I didn't do make modules install either time actually. Um, SU uh, So I should be able to do this now. Um, so sources Linux make modules install. Okay, and you can see the Bluetooth modules there as well, funnily enough. And there's that MEI ME. So I'm actually going to reboot once more. So control there, just make sure that this all loads automatically. Control or delete. So there's the chime, grub menu, it's booting, so we should see something on the screen, there we go. So once again I'll load this up, the browser's loading, that's good, and now I'm going to do it. Uh, sudo lspci minus k and if I go up, yes there it is there, it's now activated with that kernel driver, same as we've got on the internet here, so that's good um, like I said, I don't think it can display anything to do with the um, bluetooth which is a bit unfortunate LS USB. I don't think there's a K option. No. I can be more verbose. I'm not sure if that would help. Let's do less. Alright, it's just. Everything up, is it? Let's have a look. Yeah, it looks like it's just scrolled past anyway. Why this Bluetooth? So I guess we won't know until we've actually got some software installed uh, so that we can actually test it. So let's install blues now. Uh, I'll get rid of these two. We may need to do some more research about the hardware if it doesn't work straight away. But 
we'll see when we come to that. So, yeah, the kernel should be all set now. So I won't know until we get to test it. So let's build this package. Sorry about the screen jumping, it's the mouse wheel, it's a bit itchy. So system data, let's see if there's any other. Docutils, right, okay, we've got Docutils installed, I think. Yeah, looks like it's been built. So I can remove that. Um, and so we'll system do we need that because it's not part of this BLFS. Enable library. Compatibility library, right, okay, so that should do. So now let's run make. Okay, now make check and some tests. All passed, so let's become the route to install it. And main configuration file and API documentation. I don't need it, I'm not sure if that's what I just built. Oh, that's for manual pages. Okay, configuration. Um, there's three supplementary configuration files. In addition, you can option install the following as a root user. Okay, so they don't seem to do much, but I guess there's maybe things you can add to these. Need to add in Bluetooth daemon. So let's see if we can start that now. It seems to have worked. Um, let's have a look at the kernel messages. Yeah, it seems to have loaded some stuff. Um, I guess I won't know until I can actually test. I can't remember what the commands are now. Conf 
configuration and tractor control. RC test, let's try that one. No, I'm not sure what that's doing. Let's try the Bluetooth control one. Peril, yes. Okay, so the fact that it's come up with parable is um, quite good. Let's do show. Oh, sorry, list now. Let's do show. So it looks like it is working. Um, let's go to scan. Devices actually first. Right, so scan on all blue Z error not ready. Succeeded. Okay, so yeah, it definitely does seem to be working. Um, I guess this is the MAC address of the Bluetooth. Scanning, how do I make it? All right, yes, it's just come up there. So that is all working correctly then. Okay, so that's good. That's all ready. Set up the Mac keyboard and mouse and, and use them. Um, if they would work straight away, I'm not sure. So, um, at least it's working for when we get into the um, desktop environment where it might be more useful, like I said, with the Mac keyboard and mouse. I haven't actually got it with me at the moment. It's in another room. Um, otherwise, I could try it, but that's something to do for another day. So, I'm going to quit this now. And tidy up. Now I'll go to, uh, I'll shut that, oh actually um, I'd better mark that off, chapter 12. And it's blues, yep, so that's going to be crossed off. So I'll shut that down.